welcome to episode one of Comics and Us. I'm TJ. And I'm Chris. And I'm the other Chris. But you'll hear me called Lump or Lumpy for most of the time. This is And this is the review show that reviews comics chronologically, kind of. All right. So what we're doing is we're reviewing De- Detective Comics and Batman kind of chronologically, but probably not really. We'll see how it goes. We're, we're, we're starting with the Detective Comics issue number one, though. But just to see where everything started, and we'll go from there. All right, take it away, guys. Brand new action-packed <laughs> stories in color. That was a lie, right on yeah. the cover. Because half the stories are well, not in color. I like. If you want to talk about this cover. For... <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, 10 cents is a big deal. <laughs> well, this cover, just to start with, it, it, it made me nervous as soon as I saw the cover. It's... <laughs> It's kind of a stereotypical uh, Chinese man on the front cover, just so you know. And I barely yeah, got, got Chinese, except for the mustache. <laughs> right, right. And the over-exaggerated slanty eyes is pretty bad. Yeah. Right. So this issue came out in March 1937, and obviously Detective Comics came started around that time, and created by Major Malcolm Wheeler Nel- Nicholson. I don't really know. There's a big history behind him, but we're, n- we're not here for that. We're here... The cover of the comics. So, jumping right in, who wants to talk about the ads? Well, before we get to the ads, can I just ask a question? Sure. Why is the first cover purple? His face is purple, and then if you go to the next cover, they made him. Uh, I hate to say yellow, but they made him a lot more yellow. I think. Do you notice that they're showing two on the webs on the scans that we're looking at? The first couple cover seems to be like faded. You know what I'm saying? It was okay. the scan. And I think that's the scan the, messed gotcha. up. You can see he almost he must have opened the, co- the cover of the copy machine or something, and that's why he rescanned it the yeah. second time. That's why. That's why the second one. Or the the first scan is from the original, and that's from the second cover is from like a trade or something. Uh, that's probably true. Or a re-release or something like that. Yeah. So Detective Comics opens is an anthology book at 64 pages. And it opens up with two pages of ads. So The ads are awesome, by the way. The ads are really awesome. I see one on there that's 25 cents to learn how to tap dance. The, the ads are <laughs> actually the best thing about this comic. I found it funny that the first ad on here is like a microphone for like talking into and recording yourself. Talk oh, to yeah. play through your own radio. <laughs> so it's like a podcast. I wonder if they were doing podcasts. You think they were doing podcasts? <laughs> uh, no, I think they were talking, singing, and playing. That's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> I think so, too. Um, they, you think they did that weird radio voice? I wish I could do impersonations, because I like that weird radio voice always made me laugh. So, I've been when I saw these ads for the first time, I'm still curious. I wonder if you guys can tell me. What's a sex indicator? I wanted uh, to you know, know what the I, same thing. It's just... <laughs> now, the words are blurry, but my guess is a pregnant woman. Like, you can indicate the sex of a baby. Uh, right? Uh, so. So the price of the sex indicator is the same price as this comic. So I'm curious <laughs> on what this thing actually does. It's only ten cents. So it's actually the cheapest thing in the ads is the sex indicator. So what in the what the, could what it do? If you think about it, I mean, it makes sense that what is the things called where you, where um they can see the sex of a baby these days. What are they called? Ultrasound. Well, it's an ultrasound, an ultrasound. now. No, no, no. Where they pee on a stick and it's blue or not. Well, that oh. doesn't tell you the sex. Well, you know what I mean. One of those <laughs> it things. It just tells you if you're pregnant just, or not. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. <laughs> yeah. One of those things. I think it's like disposable like that. That's why it's so cheap. Oh, maybe. Yeah, possibly. it must be. I don't. I can't even tell what the picture is. The picture looks odd, but yeah, that's what makes me think I maybe like, it's something hanging over like a, a person, right? It's an odd picture. Yeah. Well, the chameleon below it. Is twenty five cents. <laughs> Can it's I tell more you more expensive to even buy? What, <laughs> it's more than a sex indicator. Now, my question is: Now, if you look at this picture, yes. when I was a kid, they sold these. They're green animals. It's not even a real chameleon. They don't change colors. They change green and brown, and that is it. But are they shipping these kids live green animals through the mail? <laughs> I I have no idea. I would like to know. <laughs> you know, it's even <laughs> curiouser. Back then, they didn't have what we have, so did it take seven, two weeks, three weeks to do it? <laughs> well, I know I've seen articles where they used to send they used to send children through the mail back, you know, in in when the post office first started. So, well, I'm yes. I'm just curious if kids are opening boxes and having dead chameleons in them. Yeah, I think so. That's I think all so. I was <laughs> when, yeah, because they would ship them in a little like in an envelope, 
And if it got fresh on its way there, it was kind of just what it is. You know? what I find there was no guarantee. Is, what's funnier about the ads is you have all these crazy things in the first one, and the second row of it's just guns. Yeah, guns. Yes, I, I love it. Blank, blank cartridges. Blank cartridge pistol. High-powered High air power. pistols. <laughs> a P-O-Matic. A P-O-Matic. I guess they my guess, P's. my guess what the P-O-Matic is, it's a, like a P-O-Matic. Sh- like it shoots hard P's like it would use for pea soup. Well, it says it's a repeater. It's 12 shots. It's harmless and accurate. <laughs> and accurate. Wow. Is, it says harmless, accurate. That is the, <laughs> again, it's 25 cents for this, this gun. There's yeah. a steam engine right underneath of it that's 25 cents. So 25, 25 cents is a lot of money. Now, now the women who are, who are doing jujitsu says don't be bullied. Now that's a 30 cent lesson there. Oh my God. Now, it's you caught- yourself- It's cheaper to do tap dancing. Correct. It would be cheaper for them to buy a gun. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Buy yourself a high powered air pistol and don't go to the jujitsu lessons. Yeah, yeah. Stop wasting your time with jujitsu. We just shoot his eye out. He'll shoot his eye out. That's all. <laughs> I do like my favorite is the whoopee cushion ad. I think that's my favorite. I mean favorite it, a whoopee cushion is classic though, right? Yes. Where is the whoopee cushion? Maybe not in nineteen see that. maybe not in Maybe not in 1939 or whatever this was. Mark, 1937. Maybe whoopee cushions were new. Next to the rock. Why do we see a whoopee cushion? The good luck ring. Oh, underneath of that, I see it. That's a good, that's pretty good art, too. The guy's like all embarrassed <laughs> sitting on a whoopee cushion. It's actually better than most of the drawings in the comic. It's <laughs> this <better>. is true. <laughs> <laughs> Magic moving flute? Down, moving down to the next page of ads now. They're not as exciting on this page. You got electric trains, whatever a weather rose is. Thirty five cents for electric train? Yes. Yeah, apparently. So Oh my, my god, uh, what is a mystery movie pig? What? <laughs> I, I oh that is awesome. Third one down. I missed that one. <laughs> I want a mystery movie pig. That's what I want. I'm gonna have to get one. I'm gonna have to find one so I can buy one. <laughs> <laughs> I like the sweater <laughs> emblems. Like are those patches or something that they mail you to put on your sweaters? Yeah, I would I guess know. it's patch. Why is there a skull and crossbones on? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. It says embossed underneath of it, though, so it looks like you have to do it yourself. Very interesting. What is uh... so the midget racer was really cool to me because that is actually a tractor that he's riding on in the picture. So <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it does look like a John Deere, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I'm like, this is a this is a Ford two end tractor that he's riding on. What what makes it a midget racer? I'm confused. About well, it. listen, they're not selling him a midget racer. They're selling him plans for a midget racer. <laughs> And that's why we it says have make your bicycle now. into a motorbike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one's pretty cool too. I see that. What's how do you? It says learn to vamp down here. What is vamp? It looks like two hands on a keyboard. Oh, yeah, it must. Yeah. It must have something to do with that. But then it says snappy jokes, or is that a separate ad? That's a separate ad. I don't see that. Oh, it's on. That's dad that's jokes. Ad. Yep. Okay. Yeah. They have. They got plenty of those. Those jokes are a uh, horse walks into the bar and the bartender says, why the long face? That's what that is. Did uh, you, nothing? Uh, did, Not even did a you laugh? I didn't even get a giggle early. out of that one. <laughs> we stopped no. listening to you, actually. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> did you know it's 10 cents to learn how to do a ventriloquist? <laughs> yeah, boys, 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 throw your voice. Yeah. The wonderful ventrilo. I don't know. <laughs> Famous ventrilo. X-ray. I like the uh, surprise soap. That's actually a big thing nowadays. You can buy all these like candles and soaps that have like stuff in them. So when you use them, right? And right. in 1937, they were doing the same thing. <laughs> They're doing the same exact thing. Same exact thing. All right. Are we done with the ads? The ads are done. All right. Well, then we're moving on to Speed Saunders and the River Patrol. It is. Hold on here. Six pages, and it's uncredited. It's about a river patrol cop, I guess. I don't know. It's a who about a vigilante. Yeah. He's not even a cop. He just he works with the cops, Listen, I guess. And the guy gets up. a phone call. He gets a phone call and takes a taxi to where he's got to go. Yes. That's what he does. <laughs> well, well, apparently Chinamen are being found dead in the water, and he needs to figure out how why. I don't know why he's doing this or. If he's even allowed to do this, well, but and in the end, uh, oh, wait, is he getting really paid for it? Anything. We don't know. In the end, what was that lump? 
in the end, you don't even find out anyway. He goes there, he beats people up, and then that's the end. No, they explained it. They explained it in the last panel. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. They just there, said there's that somebody they were transporting. They're smuggling Chinamen and throwing the sick in the sea. What don't you understand about yeah, the that? dead bodies? Well, in the but sea. then they listen. But their only punishment was they got beat up by Speed Saunders. No one gets arrested. Nobody actually <laughs> does anything. <laughs> My question was: Why do so many sailors in comic books look like Popeye the Sailor Man? That's what I want to know. There's a guy with a pipe and a red shirt and a sailor hat. When did Popeye come out? Mm, that would be a good uh, maybe question. Not sure. Maybe yeah, this that is, is before Popeye. Because the guy in the yellow shirt kind of looks like the like Popeye's nemesis guy. What's uh, what's the fat Bluto guy? Bluto, Bluto or Brutus? Okay, Brutus. Popeye came out in 1929, January 17th, 1929 was the first year Popeye came out. So yeah, this is probably based on Popeye and his popularity. Yeah, yeah. The the guy had a pipe and everything. Yeah, makes there's sense. one. There's one. Um panel here where the guy grabs somebody from behind and it looks like he's giving him a wedgie. <laughs> yeah, when he's got his arms up. Is it that one? <laughs> he's got his arm locked behind him yeah. and it looks like he's giving him a wedgie. He, he but you're right, the one guy looks like Bluto. Yeah, it's definitely something. It, when Speed Saunders has his weird hat on, he looks like Gilligan. <laughs> yeah, he kind of does look like Gilligan too. But this is I like when they tell him... This is definitely before they tell Gilligan's him, Island though. Oh, yeah, definitely. True, true. Maybe they got Gilligan off. They tell him that his new job is to swim back to shore, and he's like, I needed a bath anyway. It's only three miles. Just three miles for Speed Saunders <laughs> is nothing. <laughs> three miles? <laughs> Just swim back three miles? Okay, they do say if he gets paid or not. At the very end, yeah, he, he said he doesn't... He doesn't get yeah. a raise. He needs a vacation. He doesn't want a raise. He doesn't want a bonus. He just wants a vacation, ah, which yeah. is ridiculous. <laughs> and it does say that they he made them go to port so that the river police are there. But that's about it. Yeah, so I looked at I looked at future Detective Comics, and Speed Saunders is still around in later comics. So this isn't a one and done either. Oh, wow. I thought I saw that Speed Saunders was in the new the newest Detective Comics. No, he's not. I've read no? every new Detective Commerce, and he's not well, in the What's his name? Is The very last guy was, definitely, Slam Brady. Slam Oh, yes. Bra- uh, we'll, we'll get to Slam Brady. I know. I know. I didn't want to bring him up too early, but you're right. We'll, we'll get to him. <laughs> and he's the most important okay. thing in this anyway, so we can move on. From <laughs> well, I want to point so, out that every one of these detectives that we're going to introduce today do come back in the next few issues okay. with, with slight variations and stuff. Anyway, the, the, only things, the, the only things I wanted to touch on before we left is he mentions real Oriental Chinamen. He said they're real Oriental Chinamen when he pulls them out of the ocean. That's just a start of, of the racism that starts in this comic book. Just so you know, that's it. That's all I wanted to mention. Isn't, but isn't, and, and in, well, this day, in this day and age, isn't Oriental even a racist term? Yes. Yes, it's Asian. It's not know, Oriental. I don't know the logistics of the uh, politics on that, so I can't... Uh, I'm pretty sure, but I could be wrong. I'm almost positive that uh, I've never used the word. Oriental doesn't sound right anyway. I've never used the word, but I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to use it anymore. (laughs) Right. I I also have never used the word Chinaman, and I guess that's something that they call (laughs) them. (laughs) I'm going to say Chinaman is a racist term. (laughs) Yes, I'm going to agree with that. I'll agree with that. (laughs) (laughs) All right. All right. On to Cosmo, the Phantom of the Skies, illustrated by Sven Elvin. I bring up who's right in and creating them because some of these stories are uncredited, and okay. I don't know why. And I just I couldn't find anything on this Sven guy. That only that he wrote a little bit of of stories and drew a few Detective Comics, so he's not really imp- that important, apparently. Apparently not. Well, you know what stood out to me right away with this comic book? The man lives alone with his manservant. That happens a lot in older comic books. <laughs> yes. I why? Why that. does that happen so much? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's really strange. Well, there was a high mortality rate back then for women, especially for childbirth. So that's a possibility. And then you know you're stuck. I mean, uh, it does seem whoever started with these comics must have been wealthy. Yes, because it's always actually, written from that point actually, of view. Not really. From really, what I, from what I read, the guy behind this had all kinds was in the army and got court martialed and stuff, and he was. Oh fallen on hard times until he came up with this and even when he even lost was 
for staff before this got popular. Wow. So he wasn't that really that rich. So did he write from that point of view because he really wanted to be wealthy? Is that what it was? Maybe. But actually, <laughs> he might have not. Have, he might have not have wrote this. It's not telling you who the writer is. It's just right, right. Who drew it? Yeah, illustrated by Sven Sven uh, Elvin. I, yeah, I don't know who who it is. Anyway, Cosmo the Phantom of the Skies is only six pages, and as we say, it's this old guy who likes to collect jewels, lives alone with his manservant, and a thief finds out, leaves a note that he's going to steal it. And it's up to Cosmo to stop him. <laughs> now, that's another thing I noticed from older comic books. Jewels. Jewels are a big deal. They are. Yes. Yeah, always. Yes. Well, so, actually, it's crazy. I listened to another podcast about, like, true crime. And back in the 30s and 40s, even in the, a lot of the 50s, the wealthier people would invest most of their money in jewels and gold. Which I'm assuming people still do now, but... It was way more common back then than to actually have a lot of like paper money, and you didn't really have banks the same way we have banks now. Okay. So instead of putting money in a bank, they actually just bought all kinds of jewelry, and that's why they would have all this stuff in their homes. Actually, this day and age, you're more likely to invest in stocks than you are in something physical like this. True. Exactly. True. So and, and like things they say like pearls. I don't think I've ever thought. I don't think I've ever had somebody want a pearl in my life. Dude, I don't even, like, a gold necklace. What? Yeah, I don't, yeah, who cares? They mean nothing to me. I don't I don't get it. They don't. Yeah, but you have to remember, back in 1930, status was everything. So showing True. off your jewels and everything else was probably how you got ahead. It was a it, cool time where, like, nobody went out looking like a bum. Like, you didn't walk into a store and somebody's in there in their pajamas. Like, we walk into Walmart now and you see the guys in there in their pajamas and shit. You went out... trying to say? <laughs> you went out, you got dressed. You put your suit on. Even if you were a piece, you know, you were a bum or, or like, you didn't make any money. You had your suit on, you had your shoes clean, you had your hat on. It wasn't like us, it is today. Some of us still do that, you know? I don't leave my house without my boots and my jeans and my hat on. Okay, I'm not yeah, going but, to any. But they're not clean. My... They're not clean. <laughs> I will give you that. They're not clean. <laughs> if I don't have to put on any, if I can have to put on anything other than sweatpants, then I'm out. Yeah, see, I can't do that. I won't. I will not go outside in sweatpants. I won't now, sweatpants don't bother me. What bothers me is your Scooby Doo pajamas when you're walking through the damn store. That's what bothers me. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, well. I don't even wear shorts. Yeah, you're weird. It's not weird. Look at these people <laughs> in the 30s. They knew they didn't go out in shorts. <laughs> true, true. Yeah, you were, if you weren't wearing shorts, you were going to the beach at that point. R right. Yeah, you went to your swimming <laughs> pool and then you got dressed. And that was yeah. It. All right. So we have this criminal named Taro who's trying to steal jewels. And then Cosmo stops him in the end by posing as the rich guy. Dillingwater, which is a really crazy name, by the way. What? Dillingwater. The guy's name, the rich guy's name is Dillingwater. His name is Gregory Dillingwater. Maybe he's Dillingwater, I don't know. <laughs> the bad guy's name is Taro? Taro. T-A-R-O, as far as yeah. I know. Yeah, of course. He's, he's probably a foreigner, because apparently we don't like foreigners in 1937. This is America. <laughs> That's built on foreigners. <laughs> This is a real America. <laughs> uh, Anything else to say about that one? I don't. I didn't. Move on. I was not impressed. All right. Then we're moving on to Brett Lawton, who is six pages long, and there's strange murders happening in the Peruvian jungles. It's I was excited to see this one. Yeah, Why? It is black and white. Uh, because I I I, I kind of like westerns, and when I saw this, I thought it was like a cowboy guy, but it's not. They're out in the jungle or something. And it is not. Yeah, it's yes. yeah. South America. Yeah. And it's, yeah. Uh, it's uh, not really much going on in this one. They find out about the murders, and he's exploring. He finds a couple dead bodies, and at the end, they show some Inca bad guy, essentially. And then it's to be continued. Cliffhanger. Yep, that's it. Yeah, yeah. And the now Inca I really want to know what the little part. holes. What? They said they said the dead guys were found with small holes in them, but they weren't shot. And now I'm never going to know because we're not going to cover the next step, the next issue. <laughs> you could read the issues without us. You can just skip. <laughs> no, I have I have a I have a Batman. No, I have a Batman mandate now, and that's it. After this, I I read no other comics until we're done until we're on hiatus. So <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, anything to say about Brett Lawton? I really don't. Um, I mean, it's. Kind of was exactly what you said. Not really much happened, and they left it on a cliffhanger with this bad guy looming on a mountain. And that was 
That's basically it. Yeah, he's got devil horns. He's got devil horns. It's not drawn it terrible, just, but it's the black and the black and white makes it kind of crappy. I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. unfinished, really, more to me. Yeah, this was definitely just a setup for the actual story. This was the yeah, that's part. true. So to be continued on that one, not by us though. No. <laughs> Maybe way, way, way down the line when we're done Batman. Maybe. Maybe. You're never you going to be done Batman. Batman. They're still writing Batmans. <laughs> yeah, you sure. know there's like a thousand <laughs> issues of Detective Comics? <laughs> we'll be we dead before we finish Batman. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're moving on to The Claws of the Red Dragon by Malcolm, Major Malcolm, Wessler Nelson, and Tom Hickey. I couldn't find huh. much on Tom Tom Hickey, but Major Malcolm, is, I think he's the, he was the owner of DC Com- of this but this was it was called something else before DC Comics. I forget what it was called. I don't have the wiki in front of me. But he owns it, so I guess he wrote for it too. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was so that's interesting. So we have this guy just I could only his name was Nelson from what I seen, this detective. He didn't have a last name or anything. They barely mentioned his name. He goes into this uh Chinese restaurant. They refuse oh, to serve wow, him big Chinese surprise. food. They refuse to serve him Chinese food. They end up and he a service period, and then they finally give him like ham and eggs or something like that. <laughs> yeah, they give him ham and eggs. And then, and then this uh, father and daughter come in, and they serve them Chinese food. So Nelson gets really mad and demands Chinese food, and he won't leave. And then the Chinese people abduct all three of them. Wait, you and say that he demands Chinese food? Set up there in the beginning, huh? He does because they serve no, the no. other guys when they serve the. This is the weird part when they serve the other guys Chinese food. He demands. Well, where is it? Fruit, nuts, and tea is what he demands. <laughs> right, right. But yeah, <laughs> what they, the hell? Know, they do mention that they were. That's just like an appetizer or whatever. Okay. And they were serving hmm. other things too. So he's demanding they could serve what they got served. Gotcha. Because I even wrote down, guy wants tea, nuts, and fruit for some reason. <laughs> yeah, and but yeah, his argument is that he'll he will eat here, even if he has to cook it himself. Yeah. yeah, I'm not even sure if this guy's a detective or anything. As early on in the story, you don't know nothing. There's nothing. No, he was just a guy going to a Chinese restaurant and got locked in, and then they <laughs> gave him ham and eggs. It's weird. <laughs> he literally saw a Chinese restaurant and said, "Oh, that looks good. Let me go in there." That was it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And somehow got involved in this, where they put a, a scarf <laughs> over his head and drag him off. No, he got involved in it because they wanted him to go, and he was just being, "Oh, I'm staying until I get service." What? Right. That was yeah, he did. wouldn't leave. That was his. He's just a, you know what he was kind of being a jerk. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It's his own fault. It's his own fault. He got kidnapped at that point. It was a 1937 count. <laughs> is what that was. So I, I'm still a bit confused about exactly what goes on. I'm guessing they were trying to abduct these other two people, and then they ended up having to take him too. Yes, because he wouldn't leave. But that was fruit and nuts. This is another to be continued. Now. When yeah, this he, is, I'm back to the this. Hold on, before you go on, this is another to be continue, and this is 13 pages long. This is one of two stories that is 13 pages. This is one of the longest ones in here, and I think it's because right. the owner wrote it. Yeah, the pictures oh, are yeah, bigger. He's spotlight. And, yeah, and nothing yeah. happens in it at all. Just to be continued. No, they're sitting at table order food for like 14 pages. Yep, and then that's it. <laughs> nothing. They kidnap them and. That's the end. Right. I know I'm stuck on this, but he asked for tea, nuts, and fruit, right? The guy, the the guy who owns the restaurant says, "Veli, sorry, V E L L Y, sorry, no tea, no nuts, no fruit." That's what he tells him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Veli, sorry. I think if there was an instance like that in Speed Saunders too, where like they had a Welsh guy and he was talking all weird in the beginning. Like, yeah, they that's had right. The- there was. There yeah, was, they spelled stuff really weird in Speed Saunders. Too. Yeah, it was that one. That was it's trying to get the accent across, I guess. Yeah, yeah. All so right. every Chinese person we've seen so f- every Chinese person we've seen so far has this Got giant it. weird mustache. It's a Fu Manchu. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, not every Chinese That's person has a Fu Manchu. Yes, but not every Chinese person has that. But everyone in this comic does so far. <laughs> Well, that's because you don't know what they looked like in the thirties. And plus, the <laughs> true, I wasn't there. Racist. True, true. You don't know. Maybe <laughs> we're gonna find out more about that. Did have a few men <laughs> At least maybe every they did. Chinese person at that time. <laughs> anyway, are we done with that one? Yes. All right. On to Gus by Bill Patrick. It's only four pages long, 
and it's a comedy, I guess. I don't know who Bill Patrick is. There wasn't much on him either. But all this is is that this detective who thinks he's great in narcissistic goes to a party and thinks that this lady's jewels is being stole. And in fact, it was just the police commissioner putting them away. It's supposed to be a comedy. And he whacks him on the head with a blackjack. Yeah, it wasn't terrible, though. Yeah. Like I was going to say the same thing. It wasn't terrible. This was actually readable. I kind of liked the, like, Plain drawing was was decent. I I didn't hate this one. Well, my my only problem with it is it seems like it should be something in a newspaper and not a comic book. I agree a hundred percent. It actually looks more like a definitely newspaper comic. Definitely feels like a comic strip, like maybe Andy yeah. Dick or something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was my only issue with it. I mean, it's, it's kind of humorous, but it's nothing spectacular either. You know? No, yeah. no, it wasn't. It was just it was good filler. Yeah, but the problem is the uh, the stuff that's not filler wasn't that great so far. No, it was terrible. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> All right, are we done with Gumshoe Gus? Yes. All right, we're on the Bart Regan Spy by Jerome Siegel and Joe Schuster. All right, so this one's actually really interesting. Jerome Siegel and Joe Schuster are the creators of Superman. Mm-hmm. Ah. So, and this was released like eight months before Superman was out, even out yet. So this is one of their first stories. So just for people who don't know, um, Siegel created Superman, Superboy. He created the Spectre. Does anyone know who the Spectre is? Nope. Yeah, there's a movie. There's actually there's an actual Spectre movie with uh, I can't remember who it was. George Clooney, maybe I can't remember who was the Spectre. But there, I've seen the movie. Well, in the comics, he's the uh, the spirit of vengeance for God. So if you're into that, and um, he also created Star Spangle. And Stripey, if you watch that new Star Girl show, you would know who they are I too. I haven't watched and, that yet. That's all right. I was thinking of the Spirit anyway, not the Spectre. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> and he also created a bunch of um, Legion of Superhero. You guys, know who the Legion of Superheroes go- are? Yes. All right, Uncle Chris, you know who the Legion of Superheroes are? I'm not positive. They're heroes from the 30th century. They're future heroes. Okay. And so, like, Superman ends up going to the future and joins the team for a little while. It's a pretty popular thing, and he created a few characters. Some of the more popular ones, like Bouncer Boy, Brainiac 5 from Supergirl, do you know who he yes. is? Yeah. That's, he, he created him, Phantom Boy and Chameleon Boy, or some of the Phantom Girl and Chameleon Boy, are some of the more popular characters that he created. So, Seagulls actually was pretty tumultuous history with DC Comics, but... That's not something we need to get into here. We're not talking about Superman. We're talking about Batman. Yes. Yes. But he does. I mean, he's a pretty big deal in the comic world. Yeah. That's why I wanted to bring him up and like, say who he created and everything else like that. So, yeah. Anyway, back to Bart Regan spy. Bart Regan is a cop, I think. Is he a um, cop? He's... Uh, he, he's discharged from service as a federal agent. So There you go. He's yeah. discharged, as, but that's just the cover so they can make him a spy. So he has to cut all ties from his normal life, his girlfriend and stuff, and he goes undercover as a spy, try and I don't get something from this woman, and while his girlfriend shows uh, ex girlfriend shows up and shines to ruin it. My problem with this is he's not a good spy if he can't even hide it from his girlfriend. Well, he stinks. The girlfriend is portrayed as obsessive and not letting go. Right. So she, she's like she's literally following him from place to place. She's no, I sh- yeah. She's talking <laughs> to him for all this time. So I don't know if it's exactly his fault. No, well, but, I mean, you cut ties and you leave. You don't. You make sure she's not following you if you're a spy. Yeah, but that's not his fault that they deployed him in the same city he lived in. <laughs> true, true. That's yeah. That, that was a bad plan there. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. After she, he tries to break up with her, and you go to the page two. Uh, what is the firing squad? Why is there a firing squad at the top of that page? Yeah. All right. One second. I forgot to mention that this is a four-page comic. It's porn. Right. You said page two, and it's only four pages. So, yeah, and and at the top of page two is a firing squad. I think it's supposed to be part of his service, like after he or before he was discharged. But it's just a drawing. There's no. There's no reason for it. There's a helicopter going there's over, no and there's a no. there's a guy that looks like him with a bit with a you know a covering his eyes and a firing squad. Yeah, I'm reading yeah. through it. I'm not seeing any context for it. So there is none. It's just literally no. a drawing of really the top weird. of the comic. Maybe it's part of his cover. So maybe they killed off who he was before, and now he's so they killed him off, and his girlfriend still followed him. They yeah. killed him off, and his girlfriend still found him. 
to be fair, that's this guy's that's the worst spy. Just ever. supposition on my part. <laughs> right. Uh, well, if you're right, this guy's the worst spy ever. I mean, yeah. who knows? It's not a very good comic. I mean, it ends with her not paying a ta- the taxi driver and a taxi driver wrestling her on the ground outside of the apartment. Yeah. So, and it's to be continued. <laughs> And it's to be continued, yeah. I guess it's supposed to be kind yeah. of like a comedy spy thriller kind of thing? I don't know, it's a weird mixture of things. Well, he's about to get poisoned. It's drawn very serious. Then, well, it's all very serious on his end, and then the girlfriend stuff is the side stuff is supposed to be comedy. It's The tones are completely off. Yeah, it's, yeah, a, it's, it's a strange comedy. Alright, we done with that one? Yeah, I'm I mean, there's it. not really much else to say. They don't, they don't tell you nothing else, so... <laughs> All right, we'll move on to Eagle Eye Jake. It's four pages by Bill Alger. Again, I don't know who Bill Alger is. They only say by Alger on here. I had to look up what his first name was. Again, this is another one that looks to me more like it should be in a newspaper comic. It, yeah. it's, I honestly, it's short. I'd like this drawing. So I enjoy the drawing, and I actually didn't hate this comic, but it's just, to me, it's a little more like, it doesn't belong in a comic book. No, I that. agree. It's a I rap agree. song. It's, it's, if you read it, it's a rap song. It's one of the first rap songs ever made. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's a it's about a guy named Jake who becomes a cop, and everyone's laughing at him for being a cop, but he solves this jewel heist that was not a jewel heist. It was just about a woman who wanted attention. So there's your sentence. Yeah, yeah. Yep. But he, yeah. he learned to be a, a detective by mail. <laughs> yes, yes, you mail in for your stuff. Yeah, he probably got it out of his comic book. It's, but it's probably it's it's just a comedy, so right. it's supposed to be ridiculous, I think. I like this, but I don't again, I don't think it belongs in a comic book. This to me is more like you get a comic strip in the newspaper and you read it once right. and it's done. That's it. I mean to be fair though, in nineteen thirty seven comic strips were probably really popular too. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. It just feels I'm not like gonna. It's good. I don't want to crap on this one because I actually I think this might be one of my favorite ones in the comic book. Well, and I'm not, I feel the same I'm way. Not, like I really like this one. I just it's still more it's more comic yeah, strip style to me. I'm not c- complaining about yeah. the content itself. It just feels like these guys are auditioning for a newspaper spot. You know what and, I'm saying? And this is one of the better ones in this book. If that tells you anything yeah. else about this book, this is one of the better ones. Yeah. All right. Moving on to Silly Sleuths, which is one page. Which is a comic strip. Silly which, Sleuths is a comic it, strip. It's, it's not, just a... Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's about a, a detective. <laughs> it's about a detective who takes his job too seriously. Literally. <laughs> like, he pretends to be a dead body, dresses up like a cat and stuff. It's stupid. <laughs> it's dumb. <laughs> he's getting a tattoo of a badge because he's in a nudist colony. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we're moving on to Buck Marshall, Range Detective. Uh, six pages by Homer Fleming. Again, Homer Fleming, couldn't find anything on him. And uh, This is about cattle thieves, so take it away, guys. Again, um, this is where I got excited. I thought, oh, cowboys, but this one wasn't that great. It's a shame. It's drawn really well for a black and white it comic. Is. It's really, yeah. the drawings are phenomenal. The story is terrible. There's nothing to really talk it's about. It's typical, today. is the problem. It's an average, yeah. typical cowboy story is what it is, yeah. And it's well, and it's really just a, like, kind of um, they talk about a daily thing of a cowboy and, and that's really it. It's not, I don't know, for me it just went, but the drawings I thought were incredible. I really liked the drawing of it, but Yeah, I mean, he goes under a detective as a, like, one of these cattle guys as a farmhand and then they, they're on to him, so they try to frame him for murder and the thieves. But he's like a Sherlock Holmes type kind of guy, which I think was the idea behind him. Sherlock Holmes meets yeah. like cowboy. Okay. And and he like figures it out by like the horseshoe prints and stuff like that. And they all get arrested at the end. Yeah. Again, it's self contained story though. It's not to be continued or anything, so there's that go has that going for it. Yeah, it's pretty just cut and dry. It runs through the story, and then they get arrested at the end. And maybe I, I only there's just not much to it. Maybe, that's the thing. <laughs> maybe I didn't uh, like it that much because I read it right before the next one, and the next one just <laughs> took everything else the away. Ne- next one, <laughs> yeah. All right, yes. Let's get into Slam Brady because my God. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, before we go any further, Slam Brady was also created by Jerem Siegel and Joe Schuster. They're yeah. the Superman guys. And you know, it's funny. Slam I know those Brady. names. Just to correct you. Yeah. I know those names because you know in the beginning of the Superman cartoon, it said Siegel and Schuster. They always said Siegel and Schuster in the beginning of that. Well, it's funny because they had the fight for... They didn't get their names on Superman comics until like the 70s. Because wow, um, really? of lawsuits and stuff, because they, I think they sold the rights for Superman for a hundred dollars back then in nineteen thirty eight, and then they lost everything to them. They were both living as paupers up until like the early seventies, and then DC gave them a uh, pension just so they went and live in like squalor. Wow. Huh. But anyway, Slam Brady Bradley, whatever his name is, Slam Bradley <laughs> is actually they like when they say was one of the guys that created for him. Like, if you look... Like, all these other guys, yeah, they have mentioned... All these other detectives are mentioned, but for some reason, this guy is mentioned all the time in, like, Wikipedia and stuff like that. Slam Bradley was co- is the first detective comics created by Jerome Siegel. Joe Schuster, I guess because that's their big guy before Superman. Right. Oh. And he's he's kind of drawn like Superman to me. He's got some muscles and stuff, too. He's a big guy. Yeah, the shape of him is just like, but yeah. he, he looks like the typical, like, brawny dude from the 30s. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's not in a slender suit or nothing. He's just a big guy. And thank God, right on this first page, he's beating the crap out of, like, four Chinese guys. Thank God for that. Yes, yes. Just and they're bright yellow. <laughs> they're, they're drawn bright yellow, and they got their stupid ponytails. It's I can't believe the beginning of this. The, this. the best is how, like, pale-skinned he is. And they yes. are literally yellow. There is they no... are yeah. Th- listen, don't don't <laughs> think it's incredible. not on purpose because they mention they mention yellow skin in this comic book. Yes, they do. Yes, this, yes. This particular dad, I really liked this comic. I was I actually was just glad that something out of this book was readable to me. I mean, action. Yes, this structure. one did have the action they're claiming. Sh- yes. From a structural point of view, yes, it's the best <laughs> written one. But it's 13 yes. pages. It's the same length as the uh, other, the Claw of the Red Dragon one. And it's pro- it's the spotlight of this comic, you can tell. And the Definitely. second Detective Comics, Slam Bradley, actually <laughs> starts off the second issue of Detective Comics. They thought they had something with Slam Bradley. Hmm. Yeah. I like this little, I like this little sidekick guy that he tried to, like, he didn't want him. But in the end, they're kind he of... W- so let's get the sidekick guy is it. drawn completely different. He's drawn like Mr. Go Magoo. Ahead, yes, I love. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's drawn like Mr. Magoo. His name is Shorty. So Slam Bradley. I don't know why he's beating up Chinaman in the beginning. <laughs> oh, I guess there was a a raid or something. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anyway, so after he beats up Chinaman, he goes to his office, and then this woman approaches him for a job. She wants him to protect his dog her dog for something or another. I don't know. And he says no because he's Slam Bradley and then they push, he makes Shorty do do it. And then she gets kidnapped by Chinaman and then he has to come save the day. And Shorty is a science guy who uses his brain to solve problems while Bradley is the muscle guy that solves it with his fist. And really Shorty's the hero in all of this. I mean, let's be realistic. Right. He's the guy who... First off, I want to apologize for TJ using the word Chinaman a thousand times. (laughs) Well, he's just using it in context of the story, <laughs> just so everyone knows. He's that, making me uncomfortable. Stop saying it's making me these, uncomfortable. <laughs> in the story, these characters are called Chinamen. That is what they're called. <laughs> throughout the whole thing, it is written about 35 times in the comic. You're right. You're right. Into the 1937 mindset. Yes. 1937. Yeah. You got to You got to forgive us for anything we happens. Yeah, I agree. You have to forgive us. <laughs> I mean, God, how else am I supposed to review a comic of the time without getting into the period, you know? <laughs> I mean, uh, other than what we just talked about, that's pretty much it for this comic. <laughs> you know, they, there's, 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 there's some action. They're going through things. The Shorty uh, befriends the dog. The woman is portrayed as snobby, and even though she her job was rejected, and, and Slam is a d- about it. He's portrayed as right at the end, and she's wrong just because, you know, she's a woman. She's a woman. Yeah. And yeah. then she and makes, she makes sure she makes out with him, too. And she makes, yeah. And yeah. She, she makes out with him in the end, but in the very next panel, he says... He, 
he blows her off. <laughs> he blows her off and dumps her. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> Slam Bradley is ridiculous and stupid, and I hate him. I kind of <laughs> like it. It's it it's a really good piece to tell you a bit more about the time. Oh no, like, it really is. The comic, the comic itself is fine. I hate Slam Bradley as a person. Well, if, and- I, met, <laughs> if I met Slam Bradley in the street, I'd punch him in the face. But you would. <laughs> but in the '30s, that's the way these people were. It just no. This hey, I hate to tell you this. Wanted- but Slam Bradley would whoop your ass if you punched him in the face. Slam Bradley would whoop your ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got no chance with Slam Bradley. He it would be worth it. He'd toss you around he, like you did with the guy. Uh, my favorite is the one, the one comic strip when he's swinging the guy around by his ponytail thing, and it says, <laughs> "Who wants the next ride?" While he swings the Chinaman around by his <laughs> ponytail. So. In this comic book, just to, to accentuate the racism here, he mentions the word chink, and then he calls them yellow rats, and oh, yeah, even man. even the narrator says the word chink. <laughs> yeah, this comic in particular, the racism is really skyrocketing. Yes. Just yes. Just Slam Bradley, though, and the rest of the comics, they don't go that far. The most they use is Chinaman, but man, this right. one. Yeah, this one's rough. Well... They are yellow. Like, as you go through the whole thing, everybody else is pink and pale, and they are yellow. They and are he mentions yellow, yellow too. He calls them yellow rats on top of everything else. So. What I don't understand about what, about it, though, is why they're focusing on Chinaman. It was 1937 in the midst of yeah, World yeah. War II when, the, when Germans and Japanese? I don't know if the Japanese were involved yet. <laughs> not even but yet, they're right. not Japanese. I don't think they're, they're Chinese. Or, I don't remember. I don't know. If that, <laughs> I, I know. Don't remember the exact date of Pearl Harbor, but I know to bring it back to Batman. There was a Batman serial. I can't remember what year it was that I had watched, and it was right near, right around World War Two. And they hated the Japanese, and they mentioned yellow, and he told them you're yellow just like your skin in the serial. It's very bad, but that was Japanese. I don't understand that the hatred yeah. of. And that was 1943. 1943 was a Batman serial, which makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I don't know the story behind the, the Chinese hatred. I don't... Yeah, but that's my point, though. We're in, it would be understandable if they're going after the Japanese. We just got bombed, you know? But, right, that was in 43. But even, I mean, even then, it wasn't even that uh, yet. Yeah, I mean, but we were still in War... Mm-hmm. Well, actually, I don't know if America got into World War II until the 40s. It might have still been just Europe at that time. Mm-hmm. Maybe right. they were still playing their isolationist game at that point. So, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it was just because they hate China people. <laughs> well, <laughs> it looks it like so some, of the stuff, some of the stuff I'm reading, though, is our, for whatever reason, our media really portrayed China as horrible in the 30s. Uh, like, to our just, people. I, it may have had to do with our economic stuff. You know, probably. buying Just so you know, the U.S. I, I'm guessing. The U.S. didn't get into uh, World War II till 1941, so I don't understand the problem yeah, with anyone right now. Yeah, I, you're right. I This doesn't really make sense, but this just seemed to pick on Chinese all throughout the comics for no reason. Yeah, I'm not sure yeah, what the I Chinese don't... did to them in 1937. <laughs> but you know what's funny? I know in later Detective Comics, there's a Chinese superhero. I think his name is Fu Manchu, but he is a superhero. <laughs> Or not a superhero, you know, a detective or something. So they do have one in the detective comics in later issues. Wow. So I don't know what the deal is with it. Really strange. Yeah. Anyway, that was Slam Bradley. And that's pretty much it. That's the last story in this 64-page thing. They do give us a little uh, preview of next month. We're going to get some more Slam Bradley, so. Yeah, no, I read that story, and it's not good. He's your good friend. It says it right here. Your good friend, Slam Bradley, will be back in another Fast and Furious action novelette. He's your good friend, just so you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's a good friend who womanizes and picks on short people and <laughs> he's a Chinese. Chinese. And, uh-huh. <laughs> so, yeah, he's your friend, all right. Let me tell you. <laughs> Slam Bradley. After Slam Bradley, we get a nice uh, another advertisement before the end of the book here. Yep. Ten cents. I don't understand the ten cents a day thing. You rent this for, noiseless typewriter for ten. You rent it for ten cents a day. Ten cents a day. Um, it's available for only ten cents a day. Here is your opportunity to like get a, a real Remington. 
Noiseless portable direct from the factory. I don't know what it is. Are you on paying on time? Oh, here you go. You don't risk a penny. You don't we risk send you to Remington penny. noiseless portable direct from the factory with 10 days free trial. And if you are not satisfied, you can send it back and we pay all shippings. If you like it, you pay 10 cents a day until you pay it off. Oh, so it's not right. And it's, well, it's rent to own. Oh, yeah. So I guess you do get to own it when you don't. Yeah. How many you, get days? A free, you get a free typing course. And a free carrying and, case, apparently. And a carrying case. I'll bet you that thing's heavy as shit. I bet you it's like thirty pounds. That heavy. friggin' stupid typewriter. <laughs> it looks heavy just through the cop, just through the, <clears throat> the drawing. It looks gigantic and heavy. Yeah, it's. We should, it we should print out this coupon. We should print out this coupon and send it in and see what happens. <laughs> also, send me a new illustrated catalog. Oh wow! Yeah, I mean yeah. that's that's the Technic Comics number one. <laughs> yeah, that's the first one in the books. Yep. It's really, yeah. really, really bad. It's hard. Listen, I hate to tell you this, but uh, anybody listening, we're not going to Detective Comics next number two next time, just so you know. <laughs> no, we're, Sorry. Skipping the, we're skipping the Batman, because that's what we wanted to do. We were originally going to do the first 26 issues, but one, each comic 64 pages, and that's a lot. And yeah. two... They're not good comics, so no thank you. And it's our we, podcast where we'll review what we want to review. <laughs> and we don't I, want I to waste through. anybody else's time, because this is bad. <laughs> I went through 64 pages today, and they've been you know all over me about it. It took me five hours to read a comic, so I'm not doing that again. Yeah. yeah. But to your point, it didn't take you five hours. It took you two days. I told you I started it I yesterday, tried, right? <laughs> I tried reading it a couple weeks ago, and I continually fell asleep for like the first three days I tried reading it. And then finally I had to read it like the middle of the day because I couldn't stay awake at night time reading it. Terrible. I mean, I got, so, I got through it, but I also read comics on a weekly basis. So I read a lot more than you guys do. Well, see so, now, right. I read comics every day, but I'm yeah, a Marvel but, guy. You guys yeah, but, are DC guys. Yeah, but I read all everything that they read. Yeah, I'm everything. Every week. Yeah, I, I release, I read every Marvel comic, or DC comic that's released every week, and some of them are really bad, so I'm used to reading bad comics. No, see, all the ones <laughs> I've read, and I've read, I literally read at least a comic every day at nighttime, I read a comic, and I have not read a bad comic on Marvel. Haven't read one. You haven't, you haven't looked hard enough, there's some bad comics. Well, I'm not <laughs> gonna read those. Why would I go out of my way to read a bad comic? I'm not interested in that. <laughs> that's true. This is true. I'm going to read the good ones. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fair. But my thing is, <laughs> I jumped on when they rebooted the DC World for the new 52. And I've just read every single comic that they've released since then. So it's like I'm a completionist and I have to. Yeah, and I'm not doing that. Or it, it bothers me that I don't know what's going on. And the, the Terrifics, number 13, it's like I hate that comic. But you know what? I need to know what's going on. Yeah, I will not read something that I hate. I'm going to. I'm, you're lucky I read anything at all. Let's be realistic here. I'm not a reader, so. Yeah, that's fair. I will say something, though, about older comics compared to newer comics. Older comics are very wordy. So oh, when yeah. I when I get into the older comics, yeah. it's harder for me because there's so much to read. Where there's the newer comics. The, the, what was the like, detective guy? Which one? The spy guy. The Bart Regan spy. That one was like reading a novel. There were so many words in there. Oh that my god. It's like, come on, your yeah. pictures are supposed to show me more. I don't need to read <laughs> right. 400 so, words. I've learned that if a comic feels like it's only taking you like three seconds to read, that's an amazing comic. I it's a good one. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But if it feels like it's taking you an hour to read it, it's just, just too much in it. You need to cut back on the dialogue. Well, I hate to tell you, it's, if you say it took me five hours to read this one, it felt like all of five hours. That's why we're skipping to Batman. Yeah. I hate to tell you that. And, <laughs> and yes, we are done with this one now. That is it. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. There's really nothing else to talk about it. But, I mean, what do you want for 1937? And it's the first True. issue of Detective Comics. At least they tried, and we got Batman out of it. It's true. There were some enjoyable things. Yeah, the the comic strips were nice. (laughs) They were short, but they were... It was neat to read it, but I wouldn't go out of my way to go and read it again. Honestly... Come on, guys. We learned that Chinese people are evil. That's what we learned. (laughs) And yellow. True. (laughs) And for me... I have personally never seen a yellow Chinese person. That's my. No, I don't know where that comes never from. That is a weird thing. <laughs> never understood that in my life. No, I, I feel like they're more pale than than 
I am. Yeah, I'm exactly. Yellow. Weird. I'm more yellow, I yeah, guess, I than know. they are. <laughs> there was back in in the 30s and 40s and things. They made like Indians aren't red. American Indians are not red. No, no, they are not. No, I don't know where to get the. They were colorblind or something was going on over there. No, white is just the purest <laughs> color, so they have to accentuate it. <laughs> Everybody else is. We have to pick it apart. That's what it is. <laughs> That's all it is. So. We really only did this for posterity. I think we're doing a Detective Comics uh, podcast. You can't not do the first one. That's why we really wanted to do it. We were going to, like we said earlier, we're gonna, we were going to do all of them, but it's too much. So we're just going to go back to Batman. Yep. So looking forward. So stay tuned. To we're going to hit Batman next next episode. Next episode. Yes. Thank Detective, God. Detective <laughs> Comics number two will be Batman. We're pre-recording this, so I don't know if you want to, like, we don't have anything set up for you to announce, right, Uncle Chris? Not yet. And what do you mean announce? Like Twitter and stuff like that. No, no, no. We'll we'll wait and do all that stuff. We can add right. that later if we decide to do something before we release. Yeah, I just want to point out we are going to be recording a lot of these in a van. Yeah. For, uh, for anyone who has followed, who have, for anyone who likes the sound of my voice and has followed me over, I am also on the Jay and Silent Bob at Minute podcast. I'm not sure what movie we're going to be doing when we get to this, but thanks for following me over. Yeah, there you go. Lump, this is his first podcast, so he doesn't have anything I don't think he wants to nope. promote. Nope. Nothing. <laughs> this is enough. <laughs> <laughs> nope. And this is just another expan- this is an expansion of my channel, Anime and Us. So this is now, now it's called Everything and Us, the channel, and this is Comics and Us. So here we are. And I, anything else to say before we end for today, guys? Same uh, bad time, same bad channel. The first. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Except That's there's no Batman one. this time, but you know. <laughs> so. <laughs> you know, Slam Bradley, Bradley's your friend. Talk to you later. Yes. Maybe. Bye. And the recording lump. TJ here from Comics and Us, just here to plug our social media and whatnot. We just we're like a lot of episodes in pre-recorded, and we so we we just got our social media up now. Essentially, like it's two days before I'm about to release the first episode, but we have so many backlog that the earlier episodes don't have all the social media stuff in there, so I have to put it here, editing wise. So the first thing I want to plug is obviously follow us on Twitter. It's everything in us podcasts on Twitter. It is the at is at every T in us because somebody already took everything in us. So we're stuck with the every T in us. So it is what it is. But yeah, we're on Twitter. You can find all our updates. It's also that also encapsulates all of my podcasts and one thing i am doing three other pot three podcasts total the comics ones is obviously one i'm focusing on because this is where i'm posting the social media thing for the new comic show up there's also gonna be a movie one coming out sooner rather than later and the i have an at the anime and us show is 130 something up maybe it's 120 something episodes in on there if you're curious about any of those stuff you can do that also my co-host chris is on the comic podcast has um minute by minute podcasts uh he does J- the jay and Silent bob movies i think he's currently working on dogman all of these were already plugged in some of the episodes you're gonna hear but i'm gonna replug it here just because that's what this is for also we have an Instagram run by Lumpy, so it's kind of barren at the p- moment, but if you're curious about that, you can follow us there, everything in us on Instagram. We'll work on that one, but that's that. We don't have a Facebook page because Uncle Chris on Comics and Us, my opponent, because there is in charge of that, and he can't figure out how to update the Facebook group, <laughs> so how to actually implement a Facebook group, so we're still working out some kinks on that end. But sooner or later, that'll be up. It'll probably be uh, everything in us. Or maybe that one will just be a comics in us. I'm not sure. Whatever. 
We also, are, I'm working on a website, but I don't know how to do that personally. I'm still trying to figure out the kinks and that ones. But if you need to email us for any reason at all, you can do that right now to Everything in Us Podcasts with the plural podcast, Everything in Us Podcasts at gmail.com at the moment until we can figure out the whole website thing, which I am working on. But for now, that's where you can get a hold of us there. Uh, I think that's it. I don't think I have anything else. Oh, yeah. I'm also going to be releasing these on YouTube. So, normally how it is, I, I release the Anime and Us podcast on Thursdays and then release the YouTube version on Mondays because they take longer to put together it's because of I have to put it into video, it's not just audio. So, that'll be coming for the Comics podcast. So, you can find it on YouTube there at... Either the Everything in Us uh, YouTube channel, which is going to encapsulate all the podcasts, or I'm going to put a separate one just for the comics one. That's to see the different analytics and stuff like that. Alright. Yeah, I think that's finally it. There's a lot of announcement things at the end of this. There's two more giving credits to the artist, the person that did the music, and the person that did the logo after this so stick around and check see who they are so you can check them out thanks for listening i don't have an ending bye hello tj here from everything in us i just want to do a quick shout out to the people who wrote the opening and outro of the song it is by magnus moon and the song is called ecliptic it's royalty free music from tribe of noise i didn't have to credit but i figured they wrote it they should get some kind of credit for it Anyway, that's all I wanted to put that. Thanks. Talk to you later. Bye. TJ here from Anime and Us again. Sorry, we pre-record a lot of these episodes ahead of time. And as we went on, we got other people helping us. So here's another credit. Lillian Fields is the person who designed our Comics and Us uh, logo. So, yeah, just wanted to give her credit there for that and so forth. Thanks for listening or watching, depending on where you're hearing this. Bye.